tonight's lesson, I'm trying to work with something called a half tone line or working in half tone. Um, sometimes you hear it uh, uh, called mid tone line um, uh, or half tone line. Uh, and that line is also known as the terminator line. So we're going to be looking at the terminator line and, uh, and talking about that a bit tonight. Uh, for tonight, I got a box of charcoal here. Um, but you can feel free to use something else if you want to. It doesn't have to be a box of charcoal. Um, it could be pencil, right? It would work fine. Um, and then, of course, I have, you know, a kneaded rubber eraser. I got myself, uh, you know, just your classic kneaded rubber eraser. You can get these little ones like this. This one's from Generals. Um, you know, that's, that's perfectly good for doing something like this. And um, if you don't have a kneaded rubber eraser, then just work with a regular eraser. It doesn't need to have a kneaded rubber eraser. It could easily just be like pencil like this with an eraser on the back, right? Um, also, I couldn't find my chamois. Um, so rather than work with chamois, I just have a paper towel. And if I could find a decent chamois, I have one around here somewhere. I just don't know where I stuck it at. But a paper towel is, you know, okay on the go. Um, you know, but if you have a blending stump, one of those nice little paper blending stumps, that would work for some of this too. Or if you just want to use your fingers, you can get in there with your fingers a bit. I think that also works. So uh, for tonight's subject, I have a, uh, a pitcher set up. And I don't know if I can really show it to you without kind of, you know, disturbing this. So maybe if I just cut this for a second. So to give you an idea of my subject matter and how it's lit a little, I have this, uh, this nice vase sitting here. Um, this was uh, something I picked up at a yard sale. And, um, you know, it's something, or I'm saying vase, that's wrong. It's a pitcher. Um, it's a nice uh, water basin and pitcher. And it's something you would find like in a room if this was, you know, the uh, mid 1800s or so. Also, um, I'm back over here at the easel. If you're thinking about lighting something and you want a decent cheap light, um, I love these clip lights, you know, they just clip onto something. And, um, and when I was younger, I used to always have a bunch of them around the room and you know you could pick one up probably I would say six to eight dollars at like Home Depot or Lowe's it's perfectly good for something like this here we're just going to start out uh, you know trying to place in some of this drawing so I'm going to try to see where the top of this drawing is on the camera so about here ish I think is the very top that you guys will be able to see and then Around here is probably the bottom part that you could possibly see. And so I'm trying to make sure my drawing fits in that area. Um, now, what we want to do is to start to establish our form a bit. So in the beginning, we're going to work kind of lightly and think about the larger forms that are there for this. I have the very end of this picture kind of coming in. Um, I chose a charcoal tonight too because I thought that would show up best on the camera. Um, there's a bit of an ellipse that takes up some of this space that's in here. So if I wanted to, I could put in a very light ellipse in here to try to start to give myself that idea of where things go. Now I know part of this goes kind of beyond the ellipse. So I've, I've um, gone through and just made a section of it a little bit farther past the ellipse. Now this particular picture has a very fancy and ornamental top to it, but I'm not going to get too detailed with it to start out with. I think just trying to rough in some of the larger shapes of it is a good start. And I would suggest just doing the same, right? So I'm starting to get that bit of a lip in here and I'm coming around and I'm looking up. This is where the handle is gonna start off. And then I wanna try to get my height down a little bit. So if this is about this far across, looks like the drawing is not gonna be too much farther down than what this is across so think about that think about this think about yeah this might actually really work out quite well in this space here um, if i have to uh, maybe this zooms out a bit more no that's as far as we're going to go so um, coming around here then i can start to think about the shape of the beginning or the top of the picture that's here And then I can also start to think about its girth. And if I look and I drop kind of a plum down here, I can see that the front end of this, you know, kind of pretty much hits where um, this ellipse starts around to give the girth of the larger picture. 
Remember, you're trying to keep your, you know, things a little equidistant here. So over here, I want to think about the same thing. This space here, you know, to compare it to a space like this, a space like this. And I think I'll have this pretty well down. Um, that'll be the thickness of the, of the larger body of the vessel. So as then I kind of pull this around, I'll think of that as being kind of that waistline of the thing, right? It'll be kind of like the waistline. It has a pretty elegant curve that goes out this way, but then comes kind of back inward a bit down here. And then as I pull down on this side, I'm thinking the same type of idea coming out this way. And then I'm hitting kind of this area in here and pulling down. Now, if you're, you know, thinking about how to create an ellipse, you have to remember that, you know, in creating an ellipse, there should be kind of this middle line and the edges of the ellipse should kind of match up to that line. This one missed by the slightest little bit down there because I was, um, you know, just freehanding it. And then I want to think about the kind of the center of the pot, a true plumb, right? So I can pull a true plumb line down across like this if I wanted to. And then the distance of your ellipse should be the same on this side than it is on that side. And that would really give you a perfect ellipse. Now, we don't need a whole big bunch of this. And so in charcoal drawing, you can just kind of rub some of this back a little. This would be a good time, you know, you can get out your... And if you really wanted to, you can erase it. I mean, it's not really important to erase when you're doing charcoal. Um, but I think sometimes when you're working with other types of medium, um, you know, it, it's, it's not as forgiving. Charcoal can be very forgiving. So we have this, um, you know, have two plumb lines going on here, I'm trying to find that front of this a little over here, right? And then we can kind of think about this back section. So for me, I could actually put a third plumb line over here if I really wanted to, to try to find where that handle ends up at. Um, this is definitely should have a little distance like it did over here from the ellipse, right? This ellipse probably could come out just the slightest little bit here. And then into that handle, and the handle is very, very ornate, like you saw earlier. So I can start to pull some of the larger shapes of it out. Kind of comes up quickly. I want to figure out if I go across like this. Oh, it kind of dips off pretty quick right in here. And that's when I start to get this curve to the handle at the top. And like I said in the beginning, you're not looking for anything that's about perfection. You're just trying to figure out where things might place up to. Then to this side of the thickness of the handle, it attaches a little bit more in a, in a, uh, in a vertical fashion. And then as I hit in here again, I can start to pull this around. And then as it comes in this way, it does some funky little curve. It goes out a little. It kind of comes back in to this little filigree kind of look. And then, um, and then I have this section in here that becomes a bit more like this filigree concept as well. I don't know, I feel like this should come out more this way. It would look nicer. And this is that time to kind of get down that larger body of the thing that you're working with. So, you know, don't worry if you're having some mistakes, that's perfectly natural to have some mistakes early on in the piece, especially when you're cognizant of it. And then just try to go back and, you know, find your marks a little, figure out what fits, where things work. I think this is maybe a little bit too fat in here. And bring this in just a little bit skinnier. All right, so that is kind of the roughed in handle shape that I'm going for. I'll try to look at that piece. It has a little fancy dip in the handle or a little piece that comes out up here. That's looking pretty good. I like that. 
Um, now, obviously just roughed in, right? And as I get down towards the bottom here, even though I've started to kind of draw this in, because um, I know it does exist down in there, that part has a bowl that's underneath of it. So I want to start to figure out where that bowl starts out. And it kind of starts out just below this area that demarcates the, the thickness right below um, this elliptical shape that we had. And then I want to think about you know, making sure I get that straight on the other side. So I don't want to have one way up in the air and one much lower. And then we can start to actually draw in our large ellipse for this if we wanted to. We could think about just going straight through the entire thing. How far out does it need to go before it starts to come back around? I'm trying to keep my marks equidistant from each other as I'm coming around. And a very large ellipse like this sometimes can be a little rough to make. Let's see, get our measurements in here. I'm gonna make it come out like this a bit more here. If I wanted to, I could also come in here and think about you know where that line comes across from the middle of the ellipse, right? Just like I was showing you guys earlier to get my ellipse correct. As I look at this bit, I, if I love this curve that's in here. Change that curve up a little bit. Sometimes just kind of angling your body just slightly different can really help quite a bit. I don't want it to look like a football in the end. I really want this to kind of come around. All right, now I also have to think about there's a thickness to this in here. And so as I'm kind of creating this piece, remembering that thickness to the bowl that's through there, it's very important. And there's also a thickness that comes around the top here And I want to keep that thickness as well as I'm coming around. Right. All right. I'm going to see if this pulls back just a little. Oh, I'm making it all crooked. Oh. All right. Much better. Now, as I kind of go start to do the bottom part of this bowl, then I can start off here and think of that same concept. I want to keep my, this got a little fat over here for me. I want to keep this idea going on down here it's a nice looking bowl and then it has a little bit of a foot and I don't know if you're going to be able to see the foot down there or not but we'll just kind of draw in a bit of a foot for it for later on now that is looking pretty stinking good for that first little go at stuff and you know later on if I really wanted to I could you know I could come in here with my kneaded rubber eraser and start pulling this out um, if I wanted to a little bit better, kneaded rubber doesn't always erase the best. Uh, sometimes what you really want is um, a nice piece uh, of uh, gum eraser, right? Gum eraser uh, are those brown erasers that we have at the studio. And they're really, really nice for getting things back to white again. I could kind of lighten up some of these marks that I have in here because we're not really using those. And I think this larger shape is looking pretty good to me. I can't complain too much. There's a bit of a flat spot down in there. If I look at the bowl itself, I'll change that up just a little bit. All right, so that's the larger shape of this vase that I'm looking at. And um, that's the really important to kind of get your drawing down in the beginning, just to get, you know, some lines going on. And um, not all the time, of course, are we working in line in the studio. Sometimes I have you guys stay away from line. But in this case, I'm doing a nice contour line drawing, right? And I'm just thinking about those kind of outer lines that make up the larger shapes of the piece. And once I have my contour line drawing in a bit, I can start to try to find where my mid-tone, um, the shadows are, right? Uh, which start kind of back over here for this. And then I start to look for what's called um, a half tone, which means that's that line, that area to this side is going to be all white, and then to this side is going to be all shadow. And then I want to find that half tone line or something called the terminator line. And so the terminator line is, uh, is literally that. It's the thing that uh, demarcates the difference where the shadows start from where the, um, 
where the highlights begin, right? So as we go down across here, I have to remember, kind of goes like this a bit in here. Then it starts to have a shape that pulls out in this direction that goes along with this ellipse that we had drawn in here originally. If you can remember that edge of the ellipse that was in there, that edge is really important in here because we're going to go back and kind of touch that a bit. Now, if I look at the thickness of this, there's a secondary light source that's actually making this kind of have a, a shape that goes beyond here. So I might just kind of mark on here where I think that shape is a bit. It's kind of going back in a direction like this. But I have to remember also that that is not part of my larger idea here, which is working with halftone. So I'm, I'm gonna put in where that halftone line ends anyhow, which is about here. And then I'm gonna start to go back around this way because then it picks up like this and then like this a bit more. But think about this, I think about this, right? And they, uh, they mirror each other a decent amount. In here, this pulls out a little bit more right at the base. And there's actually a bit of this is mirrored kind of over here as it goes back in and it comes back out because the shadow is casting from this bowl onto the final piece like that. So we wanna make sure that we have an idea where that cast is going to go over here as well. I can also uh, know that this section in here is all in shadow, but if I look back over this way, and I'm gonna rub some of these lines back a bit, not that they're bad lines, um, but they just need to be a little lighter. As we come down in through here, this section kind of comes around and I have this shadow coming up the edge here. So there's actually a, a bit of shadow that's starting right around in here. It's going up the edge here and then it connects into the back. And then right in here, I can see it go just the opposite direction real quick. So going down through here, there's actually a bit a highlight that's happening. We don't want to get rid of this line because it shows us where things are, but also it's part of that mid-tone um, change, right? So there's a bit of a changeover that happens right in this location where this part will be light, but then this part is actually dark. And then back over here, I'm pulling this back this way quite a bit. And then I think there's a bit of that secondary light source that's playing in here again. So I'm going to end this and show a bit where the thickness of this bowl is. And then there's actually a bit of a cast shadow that comes down through here. I'm gonna draw that line in back to this spot where the thickness is. And that's where this is going to come around again with the halftone line, that terminator line. Right? So we got that terminator line in there as well. Then also I want to make sure that I'm looking on the inside of here. And if I wanted to, this would be a time to start to add in, you know, I could add in some of these details. This has like a bit of a scalloped edge to it. So if I wanted to, I can start to scallop the edge up a bit. This comes up into a scallop and then goes across here as a scallop and then scallops out again. It's very much kind of like a floral design at the top, almost like as if this was supposed to be about flowers or the whole motif is a bit about flowers. Nope, oh, I don't like that. Down and up and down and over and up and up in. And then I wanna think about this has a bit of a thickness to it too. And this actually is a bit sharper on that side as well. So I wanna make sure that I keep that sharpness going around. And then there's a bit of this that gets thrown off a bit for me because I think there's a bit of a, I think there's a half tone line that actually exists right in here a bit. And it's a bit of a hard one to nail down. So we'll kind of draw in a bit of something you could bring it all the way around. I don't really know. It's 
it's a bit blurred in in the image you know if i start to think about where it's at it's not so clear as you look over there exactly where it is but um this also has one that kind of comes along here and then we can't think you know can't forget about the thickness of this just a little bit of the thickness of this but i want that to be you know light in color i don't want it to be dark in color um so you know as i come back in here I can wipe these lines back a bit. We can start to think about putting some hatch marks in here that are no notating that this goes in. And you would think that um, there would be a, a half tone that showed up back in here, but there's actually not because this is so tall that this doesn't really get that much of a half tone in here. I can see there's, you know, a thickness to this that kind of goes through. And there's this line that comes along and to this side of that line, there's definitely a shadow that's happening, but over here it's to that side of the line. So as I meet up in there, it kind of jumps around. The same thing's happening down in here, where I'm getting it uh, a bit more to this side. But this whole thing is catching a lot of the shadow from that. So a lot of this down towards the bottom here is actually all just in shadow. Okay, now in here then I can also start to hatch in some of this. And, you know, I would want to kind of give it a different direction than this. I wanted this to feel like it was going in, um, but over here, I'm going to kind of hatch it in a direction like this. And hatch marks are just marks that all go in the same direction, right? So um, if you're hatching something in, it's always just going to have, you know, pattern like that going to it. So I'm hatching in, hatching in. And then even though this does, I mean, truly, that would be getting hatched in as well for the mid-tone or half-tone rather. This would also be hatched in over here, although it's not quite as clear as to where exactly that ends as I'm looking at it. It's very blurry. It's kind of smudged out to this side. I mean, like it's, it's really clear that there is uh, a shadow there, but then this line is very very blurry in the final one so it's it's difficult to figure out exactly where that all lines up at even inside of here as i come down across there this actually continues forward a bit and it captures a little bit more of this this lip because of the thickness of um this bowl bulges outward right and this does the same thing over here a bit it kind of goes you know in and then out around the top of lips Okay, down in here, same thing, right? Hatch this in a bit. And then as I get down in here, I can see I needed to, you know, come back in this area. And then think about the space that's in here. And then all the way over here, starting to start to hatch this in. It's going this way. And then for the base, you guys don't really see it in the, in the camera right now, but I'm gonna put it in down in here, just for my sake, right? We pull you back just a little bit, oh, just a little bit. I can kind of see it right down in there. So once you have something kind of set up like this, um, you wanna think about your cast shadows too. So way down here in the base, there's a cast shadow that goes out from this in that direction and um and then actually the the bench that is sitting on a bench the stool that is sitting on actually ends in here but um this also is you know all cast shadow in here and as i look um, around a bit i can start to think about um, the cast shadows that are found inside of here all right, there's a cast shadow in there. And there's so obviously another cast shadow that comes along in here. 
Now the problem is, is now that we have all this kind of like in there a bit, um, you start to kind of lose where the edges of the drawing are a little, right? So um, if you wanted to, this would be the time that you come in and you could bring a nice chamois or you could bring your finger, right? And you start to kind of blend this all together a bit. And then we're not worried about getting it nice and dark just yet. What we're really worried about is making sure that we're keeping our, our line, right? Our terminator line. So the terminator line is the, is the, big, the big deal that's in there. Up in here, we could do the same. And you know, if you have a blending stump, this would be the perfect time to use a blending stump. I'm using my finger, um, you know, a little haphazardly. You probably shouldn't use your fingers so much. It's a much better. Now, uh, later on, I'll have to kind of go in here and I race out some of this highlight that happens down the edge through there to start to really give that the feeling of the, uh, of the end of this. Um, that line is not so bright right in there. Instead, it kind of, um, you know, demarcates the two sides of the, um, of the picture in that front area. And, um, and the line coming down through here, we should keep that, right? Down in here, we should start to blend in, blend in. We wanna make sure that we're keeping this mark a bit for ourselves right now. Um, but that's also where there's a bit of cast shadow that's coming in there, that's casting off of the bowl itself, but we don't wanna get rid of the line because that's helping us to decide where the, where the pitcher actually ends. I could bring this shadow that's coming all the way around through here. Um, I, don't know, I kind of feel like this is a bit far back. Maybe we should pull this forward a bit. I feel like this should come forward. I kind of feel like this should come forward a bit in here and these marks. Um, and then this looks good to me still. This kind of ends in here. All right. So then same thing here, right? I'm going to go through. And I don't want to get rid of the line that's showing us the thickness in here at all, right? That part's important still, but um, I want to kind of get rid of this part down in here. You start to say, oh, don't get rid of this line. I want to keep that line, but I want to get rid of this. And just trying to figure out, you know, where each section goes. Now, obviously in here, I need to come back in with an eraser a little bit. Oop, I'm moving the paper, but in through here a bit. Right, and pull out some of that highlight that's coming back in space. Up it down in here and come back in and start to blend this all out. And sorry about the fingers once again, like I said, it would be much nicer if I didn't have a piece of paper towel and instead I actually had a nice chamois or a nice blending stump. I couldn't find a blending stump either. So nice, nice paper blending stump works unbelievably well. Uh, especially a big fat one, you know, if you can get a big fat one um, for doing charcoal work, it's it's nice to have. Uh, down in here, this all becomes part, right? This should all be, uh, oh, I totally messed that up because I went inside of here and this part over here is actually in highlight again. So I want to make sure that I remember that um, there is the halftone line that's coming across that, right? And, um, and that's mostly of what the Terminator line is, right? How, finding that Terminator line, finding the one that's through here. Um, now, any kind of subject you want to pick up would work for an exercise like this in, in finding the Terminator line, but um, uh, I suggest uh, having something that's more opaque, right, that you can't see through. So you don't want to have like a water glass or something like that that you could see through really easily. Um, if you're totally unhappy with some of this, like maybe this is still too stark for you, you could also start to think about, you know, coming in and putting in some atmosphere with some chiaroscuro. Um, and the atmosphere would help, you know, if I put a little darker atmosphere next to where it's light. Of course, this is actually should be and highlight as it comes around here. That's the edge still. Um, and then, you know, I can feel free to, to do a little little atmosphere in here. So I start to have that, that chiaroscuro effect where it's dark, it's light, it's dark, it's light, right? All the way across. Um, I put this back in here just as a um, hatching example, but I could, you know, pull that out of there if I wanted to at this point. I could think about, you know, other areas 
where I can have a bit of this idea of atmosphere that's just kind of touching the edges. So up in the corner there, down here would be a good spot to stick some atmosphere in. Um, you know, we could just say, oh, you know, it's over that way. And, um, and just start to kind of make it so we're getting a bit of a Kiro Skuru uh, study in there. And I don't want to pull this in too dark because we know to this side there's a bit of a highlight. But just kind of putting in something that starts to stand for some atmosphere. If I actually look over there, there's an edge of, a, of the stool that it's sitting on. Kind of goes in there a bit. So we could say, oh, this is a bit of like the, the, the stool, you know, uh, that's kind of coming around making a bit of, um, of an atmospheric statement there to give us a jump, right? And anytime you're kind of having a little more contrast, um, you know, that really, really helps things out a bit. And if you don't like how dark some of this is, you know, just coming in and, you know, wiping it out, wiping it out, uh, wiping it in or wiping it out. Here I'm grinding it in a little with my finger. Um, but this could just as easily, you know, be a, a bit of a wipeout in, in here. We could say, you know, kind of come in, we could work with the eraser a bit and start to pull back to, um, you know, because it's a little bit dark over there um, comparative to some of the rest of the shadow marks that we made, especially in the camera. For some reason, it's really showing up a lot darker in the camera than it is in real life. But I hope that's a good example for you guys uh, of, of the project you guys will be up to this week. And you have to gather some materials and a subject matter, right? You have to figure out um, you know what type of materials you have around but like I said pencil works unbelievably good for just coming in and um, And doing some of that. I realize that later on. This is actually going to get a bit of a highlight mark on the oh, oh No, it's not. No, it's this side. All right, so well, you can pull it a little dark in there Anyhow, just giving it a little a little bit of space. I feel like it needs something in there to say You know, this isn't just empty space. It actually moves back in space. So that's what I got for you guys this week um, and hopefully that's perfect for you. All right. I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye-bye.